Hey guys, I'm Tyler and today we are going to make some beautiful bar stools using rough sawn maple and loose mortise and tenon joinery. It's a little bit messy around me because I actually am making three of these bar stools, but I only got one done ready for this video. These stools are going to be made out of solid maple wood and I got a couple of eight quarter slabs here, about 50 board feet, which is more than I need. I'm hoping to get the three stools out of two or three of these slabs. The only restriction I would like to put on the project is I would like the tops of all of the stools to be from one board so that hopefully we can get a continuous grain pattern as the stools are sitting there by the counter. They may never be in line, but it's something I'm going to try to achieve. Now, I can tell you right off the bat, this board is not going to work for the tops because we need it to be 11 and a half inches wide and this live edge section of bark is going to negate that. So I'll we'll have to use one of these other ones and I can see right here we got some beautiful grain pattern in this wood. So I'm going to set this aside for the top and start milling the second one down here for the legs and the cross supports. Using my printed out design I took some measurements and laid out the rough cuts that I needed to make on my maple slabs. I laid it out so that I would have least amount of waste, obviously, and I tried to fit everything on to three slabs and I was successful in doing that. At least for my layout in the slab that I had, I was able to make one long rip cut and I used the bandsaw with a three quarter inch blade to make this and it just ate up this maple slab. It was pretty incredible. The other slab I wasn't able to make such a long rip cut, so I used my cordless circular saw to break the slab down into the smaller sections and then took it to the bandsaw to make the final cuts that I needed. Once the larger pieces were ripped on the bandsaw to their approximate dimensions, I took them over to the chop saw and broke them down to their approximate lengths. Once everything was broken down to manageable and close sizes to their final dimensions, it was time to dimension everything down to their final dimensions. And I started on the jointer with one large face and one short face up against the fence so that I can have a nice reference surface for work on the table saw. Once I had those two faces square and flat on the jointer, it was time to run them through the planer to get them down to their one and a half inch final dimension. And then at the table saw, with my very nicely dimensioned in square boards, I cut everything down to just a hair over one and a half inches. And the reason for doing this is it's easier for me to sneak up with the planer to that final dimension of one and a half inches. And that is what I am doing right here, running each piece one after another to prevent any snipe on the ends of the boards. The legs for this stool are going to have a taper, so on one side of each leg I cut a 10 degree angle, and then set my minor block and put a 10 degree angle on the other side of all of the leg sections. There is one small half inch piece that I cut on the bandsaw and this will attach to the top of the legs when you will shoot a screw through this to attach the seat top to the leg section. Using a sanding block to get off any little bit of tear out that might be there so that I get the tightest joint possible. After spending some time laying everything out to give me the best visible grain pattern, I used a ruler and square to lay out my locations for the loose mortise and tenon joinery. I always like to mark my pieces in such a way that I know where each end goes and the orientation of that end. So I will usually mark up in a corner of a piece so that I get everything aligned properly once I get my joinery cut. 
I am going to be using my homemade domino machine, or checker, as it's been belovedly renamed by some of my loyal fans. And in combination with this auxiliary fence, I actually had the best cuts I've ever had out of this machine, so that's quite exciting, and we'll be using it more in the future for sure. Once all the mortises were cut, it was time for everybody's favorite part, sanding. I started with 120 and finished with 220 on my random orbit sander. The glue up for this project is relatively straightforward, although I was very careful with my glue placement on this one, trying to prevent as little squeeze out as possible. I am using a couple sections of 2x4 cut to the proper angle so that I can get direct perpendicular pressure with the clamps across this joint. Here I am attaching that top stringer which is a half inch piece using some glue and a single brad nail shot through the top. And this is where you're going to attach the top to the leg assembly. And here I am actually clamping both sections of the legs together and I am hoping that this will prevent any unevenness in the legs so that they are exactly the same or as close as you can possibly get. So we just finished our two leg assemblies and now it is time to attach them together. And this is with a small straight stringer and again loose mortise and tenon joinery and wood glue. I am clamping some sacrificial pieces of wood on here so that the clamps aren't squeezing directly on the leg assembly and on the scrap pieces instead. Now that our leg assemblies are done and drying, it is time to move on to the top. What I did was cut it to rough length on the miter saw and then skip plane it on the planer because it is too thick for my jointer. And once I had it relatively flat, I took that flattest edge that I had and ran it up against the fence of the jointer so that I had one flat side for the fence of the table saw. Ripping it to width on the table saw and then switching over to a sled, I cut it to final length. We wanted a curve along the top of these seats, so I used some spring clamps and a curvy board to mark that out so that I could cut it out on the bandsaw. This video is sponsored by Sawblade.com, and I'd like to take a minute and talk today about the bandsaw blades that I've been using on my saws for about half a year now. These blades are excellent for wood application and are low cost compared to other blade manufacturers out there on the market. Each tooth on these blades are ground versus stamped, which gives them longer life and holds their edge for a longer period of time. And each tooth is individually heat treated so that the heat from the heat treatment doesn't fatigue the rest of the blade and only hardens the front, which is the important part of your blade. They are also manufactured from special alloys, which increases longevity and holds your blade sharpness for a longer period of time. Visit sawblade.com for all of your wood and metal cutting needs. The quality of the cut that came off the bandsaw was surprisingly good, but it was still pretty rough. So I used an angle grinder with a sanding disc to get started and then moved to a belt sander. And once I had it pretty smooth, I moved it inside to the random orbit sander. I used a quarter inch roundover bit on the router to put a small roundover along all of the upper surfaces. And then I used a chamfer bit to put a 45 degree chamfer on either side of the bottom. After cleaning up the seat with a little bit of hand sanding, I glued it to the leg assembly with some wood glue and then one and a quarter inch screws shot through the support in the top into the bottom of the seat. And then use the sanding pad one last time to put a small relief along all of the sharp corners of the legs. 
The finish I am applying on this stool is going to be water-based polyurethane. I'll probably put three or four coats on these and maybe one additional one along the top where it's going to be seeing the most use. Well there you are guys, couldn't be more pleased with how these turned out, and the wife absolutely loves them, which is always a plus. I've had this one in the house for a little while, and the kids are fighting over who gets to sit on it, so I gotta get the other ones done pretty quickly here. The checker, or the homemade domino, worked out excellent for me. That auxiliary fence that I made to help hold things more stationary helped out a ton, and I also put some sandpaper on the faces of the fence of that thing to help hold everything more stationary as I was making the cuts, and that worked out great. I've never had such accurate results with that machine. Definitely very pleased with that. This maple's got some beautiful grain in it, and I am certainly happy to showcase this in my home. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button right over there so you never miss when I upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.